Gender Development This video covers the role of gender development in child development. Things to consider include biological differences such as uh, the difference in hormones, chromosomes and physiology, as well as cognitive and behavioural differences, which encompasses gender identity, gender roles, norms, typing and stereotypes. Sex typing is when individuals acquire attitudes, interests, behaviours and emotional reactions that are considered appropriate by the culture for members of a sex. Gender stereotypes are effects, schemas, feelings and beliefs regarding the gendered activities and preferences. Stereotype threat is when people experience anxiety about certain tasks which results in them being bad at certain tasks. Uh, derived from gender stereotypes like women being bad at math compared to men or men being less empathetic than women. These kinds of stereotypes bring about a self-fulfilling prophecy. Egli in 1986 proposed the social role hypothesis and subsequent biosocial theory which accounted for how physical attributes of men and women in certain social contexts helped to explain the persistence of gender differences and stereotypes. Though stereotypes on behavior are modifiable, differences in strength and childbearing persist despite changes in the social context. Now, I'll discuss effects of gender on development. There are few differences at birth, however. Parents perceive their children to be different based on whether they are a boy or a girl. Baby boys are seen as more active, bigger and more emotionally resilient. Baby girls are perceived as being weaker, more passive and more emotional. Parents also provide the environment, toys, clothes, etc. Fredericks and Eccles 2002 found that parents stereotyped expectations of gender impacted their child's performance and self-beliefs in competence in sport and mathematics. Peers also have a large influence on gender development of children since peers are able to encourage, harass, exclude and ridicule uh, when the child does not conform. Younger children are more abrupt and direct in peer sanctioning compared to older children, who instead use more indirect methods. Gender segregation begins early and continues in middle childhood, as well as advocating uh, for more similarity in behavioural interactions. Apparently, more gender segregation occurred outside of school times, emphasizing that the teacher's dictation doesn't seem to have much of an effect as believed earlier, though this might be due to children seeking those with similar behaviors to themselves. Underwood proposed the two coaches model in which girls and boys behave very differently that might as well constitute two different segregated cultures. It is worth mentioning that not all peers are intolerant of gender non-conformity in that some variation does exist such as girls being interested in male stereotypical tasks but do not necessarily join boys groups staying within their own group. The media has an influence in gender development through music, books, and other print media. TV shows, movies, and video games. These, of course, convey the stereotypical appearance, interests, and beliefs about gender. Gender link preferences need to be considered also. Infants at birth to 2 to 18 months do not have any preferences for one gender toy compared to another. At age 2, however, girls prefer to play with girly toys and boys like to play with stereotypically male toys. Boys show gender stereotypic behavior earlier than girls, but their knowledge of it becomes of it being a gender stereotype is noticed much later then compared to a girl. Gender identity is one's gendered self-categorization or representation that becomes the way they exhibit their gendered social self. 
According to psychoanalytic theory proposed by Freud, individuals identify with their same sex parent forming the Oedipus complex in boys and Electra complex in girls. Kohlberg, on the other hand, developed gender constancy as the idea that individual sex is a permanent attribute tied to underlying biological properties and does not depend on surface characteristics like clothing, style, preference for activity or hairline, etc. He believed that gender constancy depended on gender identity, stability and consistency, how the children define gender and what makes it enduring. Busey and Benjura in 1999 proposed sociocognitive theory, which postulated that gender, like other learnt schemas, were the result of modeling, direct tuition, and inactive experience, which culminates in gender linked social and self sanctions. In summary, we looked at gender development by defining sex typing, gender stereotypes, stereotype threat, the social role hypothesis proposed by Egley. The influence of peers, parents, and the media on gender identity. We also covered gender preferences, gender constancy, and other theories. The source of this information is from my summary of the SCI 235 course, Developmental Psychology, from Macquarie University 2018. Thanks for watching.